Welcome back. We're still working on project two, and now we're in step three, where we're actually going to create the graphs. Remember, we've got our Excel data already typed in on the data and graphs tab. We also have our photos on the previous tab. The color, the frequency, and the relative frequency we've calculated for each of our packages, package one and package two. Now, pretty clearly package one is smaller than package two, but it's interesting to note that some of the same um, relative frequencies look pretty similar over here. You'll notice that yellow has a pretty similar relative frequency, but others, for example, the brown here and the brown there are not the same. A uh, couple of things before we move on into step three. It's always a good idea to save the file whenever you think of it. For example, I didn't think of it until just now. So going into file and then clicking save or save as. If you haven't saved yet, clicking on the save as gives you the option of saving it wherever. So for example, I'm going to save mine just to the desktop here. If I can figure out how to get to my desktop. There. I'm just going to save it here and you'll notice it lets you choose what you're going to name it. And it is worth noting that on the actual assignment, down at the very bottom, you'll notice it says, when you save it, save it as your last name, yummy, all one word. And so back in our Excel, I'm going to save this as my last name, Tucky, yummy, all one word, save it to the desktop. Now, it's not a bad idea once you've saved it, to the desktop or save it somewhere where you can easily get to it to actually close the file down. And I'm gonna close it and then I'm gonna reopen it here. I have to kind of find it again, wherever my file was. Doo, 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 doo. There it is on my desktop. And so when I double click on it, it should open up. Yep, blah, blah, blah. It should open up the file just as I left off. And so sure enough, I've got my photos saved there, my data and my graphs. So it's all protected and all saved, uh, no problems there. The other thing that I wanted to draw your attention to was the idea that you can change the formatting inside the tables. If you wanna make the, the color of the fonts reflect the actual color of the candy, you can do that. For example, if I wanted to change the red to a red font, I could do that here and here. Um, the other things that you can do are kind of setting it up. So if, if you're picky about uh, formatting and you want to have things centered in the middle, you can do that. Or if you really like them to be kind of centered on the right-hand side or centered on the, the uh, left-hand side, you can do that. Um, it's up to you. There's no requirement that you format it. Uh, but whatever makes you comfortable, whatever you enjoy seeing on your screen. So let's check in real quick again with the uh, project and see what step three has in store for us. It says, still in the data and graphs worksheet tab, complete the following. Using Excel, create a pie chart for one of the packages of candy. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So in order to make a pie chart, we actually have to kind of select our data and tell, uh, tell Excel what we want to make a pie chart out of. So all I'm going to do is kind of select my color and frequency data, the actual data that I collected. Notice I don't need to select the relative frequency and I don't actually need to select the header row, the color and frequency. All I need is the specific colors and their respective frequency. And then I can go insert. And then over here under charts, you can see there's a pie chart option right there. If you click on pie chart, you'll see a whole bunch of different options. And as a student of statistics, you should know that really there's one option that makes the most sense. It's this guy, the standard two-dimensional pie chart. These three-dimensional pie charts, really not very useful for us. Um, Putting a, putting a pie chart in three dimensions can oftentimes kind of bias the viewpoint, which makes it very difficult to draw conclusions from the information. So we're going to click on our two-dimensional pie chart, and then poof, like that, we have a pie chart. And I know you're tempted to say, oh, so we're all done, but not quite. 
So in order to make sense of this pie chart, we have to have some information to include. The number one piece of information to include would be information about the title, information about these particular pieces in the pie chart. And so you'll notice, first of all, right here, that the colors don't line up. So it's saying red is the color green and green is the color blue, and it's very confusing. And so we're gonna be able to change those things just by changing some of the formatting features and the design features. So the first thing I wanna show you is that once you've inserted your uh, chart, you can kind of drag the chart around, but if you click off the chart, then all those menu features kind of disappear. It's not a big deal. If you just click back, single left click on the, the chart, all those menu features appear at the top again. And so for example, if you go into uh, format or layout, then you'll see all kinds of different options. The first one, kind of the most important one is, what's your chart title? And so I'm just gonna click on chart title and I'm gonna put it above the chart. And so I'm gonna title this and you just go in here, the chart title, I'll call it um, pie chart for package number one, candy colors or candy color. So I've got my pie chart for package number one candy color. Now you probably would say whatever the type of candy is, if it's M&Ms or Skittles or whatever the information is, you can put it there. So now that we've got a title, the next thing we'll probably want to tackle is information within each one of these kind of slices. And so we want to be able to change the, uh, the setup. Specifically, we're gonna to wanna to be able to change some of the data labels here. And so if I click on data labels, again, this is in the layout chart tools, and there's a whole bunch of stuff there, but I'm actually gonna go down and ask for more data label options, which pulls up kind of a big box with all kinds of information. And so if you take a look at what's available in this box, I can kind of pull it off to the side and you'll be able to see right now the default setting has the actual frequency values labeling each one of the pie charts. I don't want the frequency value. I want the percentage for each one of those because a good pie chart shows the percentage. The other thing that I want to show is the category name. And so by clicking on that, you can see over here what's happening to my chart. I'm actually able to see that my uh, brown is 15%, orange is 18%, and so forth. There are some other options that you can click on. So for example, clicking on series name, that just adds another piece of information we don't care about. And clicking off the, the leader lines. The leader lines don't really mean much. They'd only matter if you had uh, slices that were so small that it wouldn't be able to fit the, the name in there. And so it would kind of stick it off to the side and then draw a little line connected back to the wedge. So labeling position, you can change where you want your, your labels. So for example, you can stick them outside, you can put them inside, you can try to stuff them to the center, or you can just say best fit, uh, which will, as the name would imply, fit them to your graph the best that it can. And so by hitting close, we now have a uh, pie chart that's labeled at least. The other thing that we can do is get rid of this uh, confusing kind of legend over here off to the side. And so if we're inside the layout, you'll notice the legend. If you click on that, just say none. It'll get rid of the legend and we won't have to worry about that piece of formatting. So what I can do in order to change these colors is just simply click on the graph itself, you'll notice it kind of selects the entire pie chart when I do that. But if I then click on one of the slices, just slowly, just click on the, the pie chart and then click on the slice, you'll notice now the dots kind of identify that I'm in this wedge right here. And at that point, if I right click on the, oops, I did it in the wrong place here. Go back through, do it again, slowly click and with a left click. And now if I right click on that wedge, you'll see I have an option of changing the shape, or excuse me, the, the, um, the fill uh, color that I'm gonna do. And since that one is associated with brown, 
I'm going to try my best to find a brown. And I'm no good at, at colors. So I don't know what to make of this. Is that close? Eh, it's pretty close for brown. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other slices here. I'm going to hit pause and do this so you can see what happens. Okay, so after a little bit of effort, I managed to create a pie chart with a title. I got rid of the legend. And I have labels all the way around with percentages. And the colors of the actual pie wedges correspond to the actual colors of the candy. So at this point, I can click on my uh, my uh, graph and kind of slide it around and kind of get it out of the way if I want to. But I now have a pie chart made. So going back to look at my project, I've, I've created a pie chart. So the next thing would be create a frequency bar chart for one of the packages of candy. So that's what we're going to do next in the next video.